Hello everybody, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Kudema, this is Christopher Draves, Yo. and this is Matt Weiss. Hey guys. And I'm proud of you. got his name right. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so, uh, first off, on a somber note, we're still, um, we're still thinking about the folks at Miller. Um, so we're bringing up our uh, Milwaukee, we're covering up our Milwaukee uh, logo uh, for Priors fans that may not know. Um, five uh, employees of Miller were uh, murdered yesterday. Yesterday, by a deranged employee. Yeah. He was recently fired. Um, so we're we're uh, our city is very bending very strong with each other. So there's that. Uh, beyond that, um, our show um, does our non-profit for the wonderful folks at... Make sure they're in front, up in front of the... There you go. There we go. Yeah, let's talk about Wasa. The wonderful folks at Wasa. Matt will fill us in more. Yeah, Wasa is a non-profit, uh, um, uh, was it a handicapable group? They uh, provide a handful of assorted sports to uh, those that are uh, uh, in, was it disabled? Uh, they do throughout, was it events for kids, adults, uh, veterans, all alike. They, um, in order to keep the lights on, donations are like what keeps them going. But uh, the other thing that their funds go toward are a handful of sports. A lot of the community in the Milwaukee region itself uh, uh, contributes to them. The Admirals do the sled hockey. I believe the, the Milwaukee Bucks do the basketball, the along, wheelchair basketball. Along with the Marquette Golden Eagles. Uh, yeah, and then um, uh, Marquette also does their uh, wheelchair lacrosse. So uh, they also do, what is it, wheelchair softball, wheelchair, te wheelchair tennis, uh, wheelchair bowling, and uh, quad rugby and goalball, which all amazing organizations and programs for uh, those in need of just kind of uh, getting out there and socializing as well, and like playing a great the great game itself. Um, they accept donations of all kinds. Like, they, like no donation is too small for them. Uh, the best way to reach them though is at wasa.org, or you can even sign up to uh, contribute toward their uh, to them through uh, Amazon Smile. That's through Amazon.com, where you can have them set. Uh, have Wasa set to your uh, uh, to be like a nonprofit uh, contribute or contribution. So any purchase that you make on on Amazon or shop on Amazon. Oh, I know those people. Yeah. Uh, there also you can buy a shirt for the wonderful people at Oscar Mike. Oscar Mike does a lot of work during the summer for wounded veterans. Um, me and you know I've uh, met some people with Oscar Mike before. Um, at Slinger, um, Oscar Mike is a really cool foundation. They sponsor a race car that races at Slinger every year at the Nationals, um, and all, and the race car driver allows it for free. Kind of like the same thing we do. Um, we're just giving a free plug to it. Yeah, this is a lot of goodwill because one, we we sit a uh, we sit next to uh, generally a lot of the members of Wasa uh, yes. in our section um, out of the I think it's 128 they sit in. Uh, 127. 127. That's right. But yeah, we get to talk to them every now and then. They're really, really nice individuals. And we figure, like, yeah, they don't, we're not going to hound them for sponsorship, really. But we just want to get the, the word out on them because yeah, they're they, helping uh, grow their awareness. We, we, so we'll get in contact over the summer for a well, free one. Of course, because they also want to do, uh, they want us to do some sled hockey stuff or just uh, contact us because that's their, that's how we mostly met them was through the sled hockey yeah, uh, sponsorship to the admirals. Yep, and they were all interested in us. Yeah. Uh, they came to us. It wasn't like we came to them or anything like that. You know, the, their sled hockey team had come to us. Um, um, I believe, uh, what was that? Uh, one of their their goalie. Yeah. Is uh, pitching to have our logo Steve put Johnson? on. Yeah, was pitching to have our logo put on their uh, hockey jerseys, uh, free because we're willing to do uh, stuff like it's this. Over. Um, stuff yeah. like this for uh, for do um, just pitching for donations and any little uh, community things if they need like an hour of our time we will be willing yeah, to get well, absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, we're hoping to have them on too yeah we're hoping to have them on our show in that the future cool. so um, 
Yeah, give them a shout out just again, uh, WASA.org. And then you can also go, um, like like he said, there's the, you can donate directly to them. Yep. You can do an Amazon smile. We'll uh, even put a donation button at the bottom of our Facebook videos. If that's the way, like, because... Uh, yeah, if, Is it, there a if it look currently on our Facebook page, um, not exactly. It's it's per video. Oh, okay. Each video, that's why if it says like we're asking for donations, we're not asking for donations. We're asking you guys to donate. Uh, to consider donation donating to Wasa. Correct. So, it's um, a great organization. I I would highly encourage everybody to pitch in whatever little bit they can, or just spread the word about their organization. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. even better. Like we are, you know, we're trying to get the word. So yeah, they're in no way sponsoring us, but we're giving them the goodwill shout out yeah. because they gave us a goodwill shout out for doing something for them. Yes. So yeah. anytime, it's one of those you scratch it's ours. A charitable we, thing, man. You scratch ours, we scratch ours, we keep it going. Yeah, it's a charitable good karma situation. Yep. All right, not, so right. our yeah. show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, Milwaukee's number one one-stop shop for all your hockey needs. Like I said, you can go visit their store at 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, right across the street from Wilson Park. And if you need gas while you're there, you can go over to the Clark Gas Station right across the street, which will give you a little bit more of a definition of where they are while you're on your way. little odd note about, uh, was it the Clarks? Uh, that was one of the first hockey teams sponsored by in Milwaukee was the Milwaukee Clarks. Oh. Yep. Little uh, little trivia for you out there. But, uh, yeah, Hockey Locker was the first sponsor for them. That's right. Yes. So, of the original owners of Hockey Locker, right. not Milos. Right. Yeah. Um, the, uh, they had passed on and uh, sold, the family had sold it to Milos, and Milos had kept it and uh, left it, kept it here. And um, the rest is history. The rest is history. So, uh, yeah, you could call them at. Oh, yeah, you can absolutely call them at 414 800 7585. And where can you reach them online, Chris? Uh, with that, yeah, hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Very nice. Almost got tongue tied. Yeah, but you made it through. That's all that's, that's, all that's important. Yeah. So. Yeah. You can get everything. Yeah, you really can. Uh, personalized jerseys, uh, personalized NHL jerseys, personalized Admirals jerseys. You can get your skate sharpened. You can get uh, NHL hoodies by CCM, which you is a reputable awesome hockey. Uh... You can get hockey sticks like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he, per, he excels in selling CCM, so go there if you are a big fan of CCM gear. Yeah, that's why I think he sells CCM hoodies and uh, T-shirts. And hats, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, you could also buy. Uh, the referee gear. Referee gear. Uh, in you can get your goalie skates, gear, figure gloves, skates. helmets. Uh, you can get your pee wee hockey gear for your kids that are just starting off in the sport. You can't find good referees there, though. That's the thing. It's That's hard the, to find. It's them hard anywhere. to find them. Where, like I keep waiting. Like you know how they always say, like Finland is the the. Haven. You could also get this. Oh yeah. Nice predator winter hat. But you know how they always say Finland is the haven for goaltenders? I want to find the haven of officials. Ugh, I don't know if that's even possible. Well, the, uh, the haven of good officials. Of you know, the one oh, that's those, go, those, those all belong in the KHL. Uh, yeah, right. So it's Russia. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But all righty then. That's Hockey Locker. Give him a shout out. Say hi to Milos and even say Milwaukee, from Milwaukee National sent you over. Yep. All right. So on to why we're here. Ooh, yes. There's Nashville over there, and there's a Calgary over there. Yeah. yeah. No, they were not at the Pringle Dome. No, they were. <laughs> yes, because uh, in our recent uh, NHL yes, it's editorial. It's a, it's a cheap plug to our editorial video. Um, we have a, a arena video where we give our thoughts on all of uh, the NHL arenas. And we um, kind of made a joke about the Flames looking like a stack of Pringles. I even think it's just like one Pringle on top of like, I don't know, like just a, a weird just like yeah. table or something. So but, it's a battle of the Saddle Dome and the Bridgestone. But yeah, we go through all those. Uh, we talk about our favorites. We talk about the things we like, things we dislike, our favorite arenas, our least favorite arenas, yep. and so forth. But uh, let's talk about this game, guys. Um, what a game it was. Yeah, especially <laughs> that last minute. I mean, I don't think any of us really. So honestly, I don't think anybody really expected this ending. 
Like, did any did any of you guys think the sending no, was coming? I honestly thought they were gonna beat us by a goal. Because like we all saw the was a Calgary knotted up a goal or notched up a goal uh like with what less than a minute left? Yeah. Forty seven seconds. Forty three seconds. Forty three seconds. Forty three seconds and just like shh like, Ah oh, crap. Well, because we said some f bombs. Like we we haven't we like honestly in the last few games we haven't even come close to uh a, like anything uh within the minute like shooting anything within the minute. Yeah. But we were granted to a treat tonight. <laughs> like not like again not expecting this at all and the fashion that it ended up being giving us overtime the way it does. We'll get into that later. Yeah. But that was uh you um, know, one thing right here. Yeah. What Nashville do? What I said they needed to do? Kill the penalty. Uh, stay out of the box. Stay out of the box. Yeah. If you stay out of the box against Calgary, you will be okay. And the Flames were definitely trying to instigate or get like the the Preds riled up. They were trying to they get their feathers ruffled. They were fighting a lot. Like it was unnecessary. But they were playing like a bunch of. Goons. Also going after guys like uh, who did you Fabro? Say? Yeah, Fabro. Tenardi. Hang up. They went after Fabro. Tenardi. They went Tenardi. after Tenardi to try and ruffle his feathers. Because yeah. they know Tenardi is a fighter, too. Yeah. Um, they tried to ruffle up Yossi, which I don't think that's the greatest idea. Now, Yossi, he'll throw down. I mean... He's you know, not really a fighter, but... but he will throw massive down, like, props to the rest of the... Was it the rest of the guys for not falling for it, though? Yeah. Because that that's all it is. That's trying to get the other guys to fight back and retaliate. All right. So, let's... Anything else that pops out at you guys as far as the stats outside of the giveaways... Uh, Nothing really. Just again, good job keeping the keeping the uh, penalty kill away. Yeah, you played a clean game, Preds. You let them be the goons. That's a good thing. Yeah, when you let the other team play the bad guy in your building, that benefits you typically. Yeah, yeah. Because right, nine times out of ten, they'll call for the road team because they want to keep it even. What was our only uh, pims for? Probably it was a matching. Or... It was a matching uh, bluffing between oh. Yossi and Kachuk. It's all offsetting minors. Yeah, oh, that was okay. Yossi. Yeah. So at least like we got like we didn't we didn't get a power we didn't have to do a penalty kill. That's all that's that's yeah. all that matters. But yeah, we had one one of our guys in the box. But as long as it's an offset, yeah, exactly. That's fine. All right, Let's so scoring it. in the first. Chris, take it away. Uh, Colton Sissons gets his ninth goal of the year with an assist from Colin Blackwell, his sixth, and our captain, Jared Tenardi, his our, uh, fourth. All right, uh, you want to take the second? Sure. Second uh, was dominated entirely by the Calgary Flames with uh, yeah. Rasmus Anderson with his fifth, uh, assisted by Backlund, his 25th, and Kachuk with his uh, 34th. Uh, that was at the tw- was at 26 mark of the second. Uh, at the 348 mark, uh, Mikhail or Mikhail Black Backlund with his 15th unassisted, and we cross over into the third period where Captain Roman Yossi would uh, notch his 15th with an assist by Ryan Ellis and co- his 25th, and Colin Blackwell his seventh. All and right, then Andrew Mangiapani scored his 16th with a. Uh, assist by uh, Backlund, his 26th, and Anderson, his 16th. Then with 0.1 second, uh, Mikel Groundland scored his 16th with an assist from Forsberg, his 25th, and Ellis, his 26th. I see that's worthy of one stick tap. Yeah. Because one for nice Grandland. work on that one because, again, I remember when we came into this, like when Mikhail Grandland came into it, there was so much naysay about him entering the organization, how he was going to go on the trade block. And then when he didn't go on the trade block for the deadline, that people were furious, like, oh, he's not going to contribute. Here you go, people. This is what he did for the Wild when he came there. Yeah. All right. And then in overtime, at a minute and 20 seconds in, who else but Mikhail Grandland? Beautiful. Uh, his 17th with an assist from Ellis, his 27th, and Duchesne, his 27th. Preds win at OT? Bingo, 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 bingo. That's a really good game. They Here's the thing. You didn't let them get you riled. Nope. You drove us crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shots. Dead, almost dead even. Are dead even, but right. only... Because of the two during the overtime that the Preds got and the zero that Calgary got. 
Yep. Three stars of the game were Colton Sisson the third three, uh, with a goal. Uh, UC Saros with... 36 saves on 39 shots with a .923 save percentage. Pretty good. Ooh. Yeah. And two goals, including the game winner, Mikhail Granlin. Not well deserved. Well deserved. If if you didn't welcome him to Nashville at all, uh, Smashville fans, uh, this is the time to do it. Now. Oh, wow. I know that name. All right, so your referees were Tom Chemelinski. Chim- he used to be an AHL ref, and Ian Walsh. Uh, then we have linesman Darren Gibbs and Brian Mock. I guess he was a uh, Mock 10 there. <laughs> uh, the head coach for Calgary is Jeff Ward. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Scratches for Calgary. Wait, he's in the NHL? Okay. Matt Stone, Zach Ronaldo, and Oliver Collington. Uh, Michael, Michael Stone. Stone. Uh, uh, Michael Stone. Matt Stone's over there in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. All right. Nashville scratches were Yannick Weber, Carbinian Holzer, and Austin Watson. I believe they're just holding Holzer out until they need grit. Yeah. And tonight was not a night for grit. No, he would no. have fell for those. Yeah. yeah. This, was a, this was a nice little message to the rest of the league, too, that... As they like, you even told you even pointed out to me, Dan, that they pointed out what was it? They uh, they changed their hashtag to now, uh, what is it? Embrace the grind. Embrace the grind, and we. This is exactly what we saw tonight. This was tic tac hockey all the way through. Yeah, they was it. Yeah, Calgary was able to get a little bit of an advantage in the second, but it was straight up grind out hockey. Hey, it's a playoff quality game. What can I say? And Calgary being where they are, is even more of an answer. Yeah. All right, so this may need to be refreshed. It'll be a lot faster. Maybe. Yeah, that was faster. (laughs) Because at the time, they do not have the updated, but I do know that there's still one game going on in the league. But no, with, um, like, we were even happy just to get at least one point. We didn't know how overtime was going to go because... Uh, like I think many of us agree on this that uh, right, over so Nashville has seventy four points now. Seventy two. Seventy two. Okay. But, Calgary um, has seventy three because they picked up one. Now yeah. if they would have Nashville would have won the regulation, that would be tied with Calgary. Yes. But we're still in the number two, and we're basically the eight seed in the uh, playoffs. Also, we don't know how Cal because I don't remember who Calgary's playing next. But, um, again, this could be a momentum swing. For for Calgary, like, this could be a momentum swing on their part. Because ah, of, maybe it'll start trending yeah. downward, which would but help. As I was, like, I was uh, in the middle of saying this, but, like, overtime hockey, where it comes to three-on-three hockey, that's anybody's game. Yeah, especially like, shootouts. Shootouts, like, exactly. One-on-one. I get nervous with shootouts. Because three-on-three hockey is, I like to think of it more as advanced tic-tac hockey, because you're kind of, it's all a passing game. Yeah. It's all a passing game of who can basically deep the goalie with as many passes as possible and get it in the crease. Yeah, and it's also about who can control the puck longer, too. Right, which is exactly uh, what beat us yesterday at the Admirals. Yeah, and the Predators showed that if they control the puck long enough and over time, they could set themselves up right. for a win. Well, it's like, again, 0.1 seconds. 0.1 seconds left on Granlin. That's just... That's incredible. They play Tampa Bay. Ooh. Ouch. Sucks to be Ooh. there. And Tampa Bay's going to come with some uh, anger in the next yeah, one. Yeah, after losing to the Blackhawks tonight. Yeah. Uh, losing 4-2, to two, if I recall. Let's take a look. Up, up, up. 5-2. Five Five to to that ain't ow. good when you lose to the Blackhawks. Nope. The rest of the division, uh, Winnipeg won three nothing over Washington. Washington. St. Louis took it to overtime with the Islanders. Minnesota won seven to uh, one against Detroit, ooh, ooh, ooh. which is easy anyways. Detroit's basically just letting it all. However, go. Dallas lost to Boston. Yeah. Like that. And well, just for good measure, Vancouver lost to who? <laughs> Five to two. The Senators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> All right, so if Calgary does lose their next game, 
and say Vancouver wins and Edmonton loses. Um, Calgary goes up. We jump over Edmonton. Ouch. <laughs> that means the game we go to may have a little more importance than we think. Yeah, because we will be at the Predators game against Edmonton on Monday. You guys are going it's to official. the bridge. Going to the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, and we and we just confirmed we will be in Minnesota on the 15th watching the Predators in the Wild. So. Watching uh, hockey in one of our, like, I think we can say that it's one of our okayed arenas. Yeah. Which is also in that YouTube video. Yep. <laughs> also, it's in our TV market, but, you know, you guys care about not the, the Monday or the 15th, but what's up next? Predators of Colorado on Saturday. And I believe they're still at Bridgestone, so this is backwards on accident. Eh. Well, uh-huh. we can live with it. All right, so we do have Colorado next. Colorado, in their last... 10 or 7 2 and 1 and a four game win streak. Uh, mm. However, the Predators are 6 3 and 1 and they're on a three game winning streak. So if we can escape, like I said, get points. It don't matter how you do it, just get a point. Grind for overtime. Yeah. Make that game interesting on Saturday. Like, overtime's not the goal, but just grind. No matter what. Yeah. Grind for goals. Hashtag grind for goals. <laughs> that should be a hashtag for us. <laughs> grind for goal. All right. So, like I said, they're up next. Uh, their top line. Their top line consists of uh, left winger Gabriel Landeskog. In his last five games, he has two goals, three assists. And then their center, Nathan McKinnon. He has a goal and four assist, and then their right winger was that Valeri. Uh, Valeri Nuchuskin. He has a goal and an assist. Uh, their second line of a uh, Tyson Jost, their left winger, he only has an assist, so I'm not too worried about them. Their center, uh, J T. Comfer, he has two goals and an assist, and then their right winger, uh, Jonas Donskoy. Yeah, Jonas Donskoy. Uh, he has a goal and assist. Their third line, I wouldn't really worry too much about him. Besides Outside. maybe Martin Colt. Cut. Cut. Yeah, he has a goal and assist. Oh, a familiar friend and foe. Hey, Vladislav Kamenev. He, he was... has an assist. How many but of he's us? His fourth line or center. How many of us were so bummed when we uh, when we saw him go? A um, lot. A lot of people were bummed yeah. to see him leave the Admirals organization. Now on defense, Ryan Graves, uh, he has a goal and assist. Uh, Kale McCarr. Yes. He has three assists. Uh, their second line defense, uh, Samuel Gerard only has an assist. Keep in mind, this is only their last five games, so take it with a grain of salt because their Man. first offensive line, that's like their top, top line. I'm not too worried about anybody on defense. Who who sticks out in your mind? So Landis Cog, two out of the three, five points, or three, five, uh, uh, most of his points are coming from the power play. Mm-hmm. If yeah, you actually uh, look at their power yeah. play, all their points are coming from power play. Mm-hmm. Sure. So yet again, back, oh God, look who's on the second line power play. Ouch. Oh. The second power play unit, not good. I All right, but let's talk about this because they're goaltending. They are in flux right now with losing uh, Grubauer for possibly the rest of the season. Yeah, and that can be their momentum swing. Yeah, because, I mean, look at this injury. That Losing Grubauer oh, and Rantanen is like the big smack, and then losing uh, Ka- Kadri, Colin Wilson, who all of us know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. You know, so they're pretty stacked with injuries. So if if you're gonna see Hutchinson, you better hope you do. Did they do uh, eagle call-ups? Yes, uh, Pavel Francouz. Okay, so again, that might play to the Admirals' advantage. Oof, look at well. GAA. Because the Admirals are set Ooh. to play the Eagles. And he is the starter. He is uh, four zero and one in his last five, with a one point five goals against average and a point nine one four save percentage with one shutout. 
Uh, then if you play Michael Hutchins, because they are probably going to play Hutchinson because they're running a 3-3. Three and three. They play yeah, Friday, exactly Saturday, right. and Sunday. So they're going to probably need Frank Close to be a fresh for the Sunday game. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so either or, you have, like, depending on who starts, you either have a Hutchinson who could be, like, burned, yeah. burned out. Or you can have Pavel, who's been playing, like, who's mainly been, you know, playing AHL screens. Yeah, but Hutchinson, he's 0-1-0 with a 4.07 GAA and a .882 uh, save percent. And that's his la- over the last five, so. But I think, honestly, that looking at these lines, the scariest thing about them really is their defense. Like, it isn't, like, I, I think their forwards, like, still put up because their defense basically sets up the passes, gets yeah, the puck right. back, and that can frustrate, yeah, possibly frustrate. Okay, so, their, okay, so, okay, so, Frank, so, Frank Collins is, is definitely going to be the goalie of their future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he is 5-1-1 one one in the last 10 with a 1.71 goals against average with a .9. Three eight save percentage of one shutout. Now Hutchinson is two and one and two with a two point nine eight save percent or goals against average and an eight eight nine save percentage. So it's not looking good for him at all. Yeah. So um, honestly, like never like like any game right now because we're about to enter March. Never count somebody out because especially that's, your, your divisionals. Yeah, these ones you need to at least walk away with a point. And these ones are, like I said, like with, if you're within scratching distance of each other, walk away with a point. Keep yourself in scratching distance. Look at what the Admirals did last season to get to the playoffs. Look what they're still doing. Look what they're still doing now. Yeah. Here's the thing. In this month, the Admirals are 4-4-1-1. That's 500. Yeah, and it's if the not Predators that. could pull that off, that would benefit the Predators and keep them in the playoff picture like they currently sit. Now, with, like, I guess we're talking Admirals, like, we're on a, a how many game? Because I think it's 2-2 two, two and a 2-2-1. Two, two and one. So, five, a five-game road uh, five game uh, road run. Yeah. So, that's going to be another challenge, too, because playing on the road for a long duration, especially two back-to-back games... Or two back-to-back team games with, like, uh, I think it's uh, Colorado and the Stars. Yeah. Like, that's going to be, that's a challenge. A lot of, oh, a lot of. Colorado sit in the standings currently? Uh, in the AHL? Second in the Central, okay. Okay. But uh, we're going to have the well, St. Louis our, with 86 points. Our division's always going to be tough. So. Yeah. St. Louis with 86 and points. And that's the thing with, with playing Colorado, then we play Edmonton, yeah. then we play Dallas twice. Edmonton at at bridge. Yeah, yeah, so I'd say all playoff teams are up there. So this is going to be the the grindhouse, really. Yeah. yeah. This is the Nashville going into the. It's going to be grind them out hockey. Yep. This is what you need. You got to get battle tested so before the playoffs. Let's start. take a look at the point standing. St. Louis is leading with eighty six. Colorado leading with eighty one. Dallas leading with eighty. And our wild card, at least for the for the Central Division, is at uh, Nashville with seventy two. And Winnipeg at seventy or Na- the Nashville and Winnipeg are both tied at seventy two, yeah. with uh, Nashville leading the was it leading in fourth. However, Minnesota can catch them. Yeah, yeah, because Minnesota's surprisingly playing good during a uh, two game winning streak. I six, three and one in their last ten. I want to rule Chicago out, but I can't. Yeah, not in our division. No. no. But then again, Chicago is in the basement right now. And usually when they're in the basement, they stay there. Well, again, they I'd like them to ideas. stay in the basement. Don't get me wrong, but usually it's at this point where, especially these standings are this close together in this nice little knit, like knit cluster. Yeah. They like to climb back out. Not to mention, don't have basement teams. I mean, like even to LA play. to an extent is not out of it. No, not by a long shot. Because the was it the Pacific Division is such a watch. Not to mention, we have a lot of hockey to play still. We're not even at March yet. Yeah, we got. Like, we will be soon, but we're, we're not. We're in the more. less than twenty, less yeah. than twenty games now. For yeah. in the AHL as well. Yeah. I think was it the Admirals only have like what seventeen, eighteen games left. Yeah. So, yeah. Is there anything else you want to cover in this one? Nope. Outside of. The 
fact that who would you put on there on your uh, crap list for the the avalanche right now that you can see? Uh, Vladislav Nonstikov with a minus eight, Eesh. and Samuel Gerard with a minus three. Uh, but like uh, what I said, when you look at their goaltending, oh, 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 what's what's oh? Pavel Farko in 17.5 and 0 was a .927 save percentage and a 2.26 goals against average. Oof. That's pretty good. Really good, actually. So, uh, uh, the other thing is, if you look at Saros, his uh, goals against average dropped again. Yay. Good and on that you. save percentage is going up. And here's the thing. They're back at being normal and back at being pretty even again. Which, you know... Like you were talking about in our last Admirals mo or last Admirals video, uh, this is pretty reflective of what happened last year for us, and uh, the wild but card. only only for Colorado. Yeah, Colorado's gonna have to scratch and claw to not have to yes. face somebody as as good as they are. Right. Because let's put it this way, I'd rather play St. Louis than play Dallas again. Yes, absolutely. Um, in tonight's game, uh, who on the, the Pred squad would you say could have shown more improvement, if anything? Yeah, do you have a crap list for tonight? You know, I don't really, I mean, I hate doing it, but Ryan Johansson's been kind of on that list Isn't for a little it? while. He's been bordering on it for a little while Yeah, he's now. consistent with getting negatives, I see. So well, we were talking about uh, Kelly Yarncroc a little bit, although his face off his face offs are fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whew. Face offs are fine with him. I just want to see him doing more. Yeah. I mean, look he, at Joe Hansen. He was uh sixty odd percent. Uh Benito needs to get a little better. Turris needs to get a little better. Gradlin needs to get way better. On the face off. And I have to say Duchesne too. Yeah, I mean, it's not horrible, but no. it's not great. No, 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 no. Duchesne, at least, uh, he got a, what is it, he got an assist tonight, right? He, he, yes. Okay, so he's not entirely on the list. I just want, I, oh, I guess that's Oh, um, um, I forgot to mention there, Calgary's goalie. <laughs> Whoops, sorry about that. All right, so Calgary's goalie was David Redditch. Uh He stopped 34-38 with a point eight. Nine, five, save for he seven. was not happy when he left the ice today. No, nah, he snapped his stick. Oh, boy. All right. How about gonna... you if you give it up like that? Well, how are you going to play the game now? You broke your stick. Yeah. <laughs> game's oh, over. The game's over. Yeah. Well, yeah. how are you going to play the next game? All right. <laughs> You're only allotted one stick in the NHL. <laughs> oh, yes. Keep breaking those because, you know, they've already told everyone that CCM's having issues getting sticks from China now. Yeah. And so, Damn coronavirus. so yeah, keep breaking your stick. You won't have one to play with. First, but, but anyways. anyways, um, so that was our show. Um, like I said, don't like I always say at the end of all of our shows. Um, uh, don't forget to check out our lovely friends at Hockey Locker, twenty o two West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee's number one one-stop shop for all your hockey needs, whether you're a player, fan, or you just want to be a referee. From the helmets on your head to the skates on your feet. Yep, and then anything in between. Can we get a, one more shout-out to our Goodwill guys at uh, Wausau as well? Whoops. <laughs> Don't want to do that. We still want to stay in frame. Yeah. We can leave that up still. Hey, we got it. <laughs> yeah, give, give these guys a look on uh, their website, too, at uh, wasa.org. Or check them out on their website, too. I believe it's wasa uh, dash, or wasa hyphen Wisconsin Adaptive Sports Association. Just check them out. Like, even if you're not in the region, just give them a check out. Give them your support. Share their page. Uh, share their website. Uh, or even sign them up, or sign them up with your uh, Amazon account through the Amazon Smile program. All right, so you guys will not be seeing us tomorrow. No. But stay tuned because me and Matt will be dropping an editorial on fighting in hockey. 
Oh yeah. Uh, recently, we um, have many. Uh, I'm sure many in the hockey community know uh, there was a pretty gruesome fight uh, or after effect of a fight with the Hershey Bears. Ah uh, uh, yes, I unfortunately saw that. And uh, was it the Charlotte Checkers? And uh, a, a lot of people were stricken in the the was it the debate was stricken in the, the hockey community about fighting again. And I thought it was a pretty good time to at least talk about it. Like, do we, how we feel about it, and, uh, or how, what we like about it, what we don't like about it, etc. Yep. So we'll get so, into that. So, yeah, check it out. If Chris is going to stick around for it, he could be our guest. If not, um, well, we'll get his opinion eventually. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, we are from Milwaukee to Nashville. Our uh, loyal sponsor is over here. And it it's is Hockey Locker. Here. It is Hockey Locker, <laughs> like we said. Um, and uh, don't forget over to go over to YouTube. When you go over to YouTube, click uh, that subscribe button. And then watch your videos while you're at it. And then click that little bell. It is from Milwaukee to Nashville on YouTube. Give us some comments, too. We want to know what you think. And oh! if you like the video, hit the thumb up. Hit the thumb up. Also, also, when you go over there, if you do comment and you do have a suggestion of a video as an op-ed that you do want us to do, why not throw a suggestion? Yeah. That way we're not just... Coming up with them on our own. You might not like. Yeah, like honestly, we might have to do like a fan mail email or something. We we do have an email. What is it from Milwaukee to Nashville? And I should get a subscribe count up. Yep, we do have. We're kind of stuck at thirty three right now. Yep, Uh, we need two more folks too. Try to get to thirty five. We gotta grow it, people. The magic number to get the to get the YouTube to make the YouTube playoffs for us is now two. (laughs) Yeah, I would love it if we get thirty five. You know, uh, yeah. It just shows growth and all help YouTube uh, record. Oh, oh, one more thing before we leave you. Oh, wait, wait, there's a bone. Wait, we're going into overtime, guys. Um, today there was a transaction. Yes, there was. Uh, Ken Appleby was si- assigned to the Florida Everglades by the uh, Milwaukee Admirals, and Connor Ingram was assigned to the Admirals from the Nashville Predators. Which means Pekka is better. Yeah. And uh, he had Florida. A small stomach flu, probably. Yeah. Florida, you can calm down now. Yep. Ah, it was food poisoning again. Aye. But no, uh, I noticed that Florida was kind of panicking a little bit that uh, Appleby was going up because we just took up... Uh, Their best uh, Well, we took up Magwood. We took up uh, Crags, too, yeah. because they just lost a bunch of uh, others to, I think, mostly PTOs. But, yep. uh, like, they lost... Uh, we talked about it before, but... Not we, to mention uh, Florida lost Winnicky to Charlotte. Yeah, they that lost really Win- hurt them. They lost Winnicky. They lost uh, Cam McLeese to the Chicago Wolves. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the last one. I, we've discussed it before. In our also program. announced in the uh, today, uh, there was a suspension. Iowa Wild player, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, Gerald Mayhew suspended for one game for a legal check to the head. Ooh, who, yeah, who are they playing? Uh, they were playing the Wolves. Oh, no comment. But no, no, that's not fair to say. That's. No, you don't. You, you, do you don't check to the head. No. no. And uh, was that a Lowen? He was suspended for one game for uh, his third game misconduct of the year. Who? Lowen for the Wolves. Mm. I'm still upset that they didn't. Uh, like I, for, I forgot who it was in our when we were doing our throwback game, or our, our salute to Daniel uh, Dar- Darren Hadar. Who was uh, constantly go adding the whole game and like getting nearly like how many like so many pins? You oh. know it offhand, Dan. Probably. Oh, time again. Time again. Yeah, I'm still surprised you didn't get a suspension. All right. Well. But anyway. Uh, that was just your little news update and yeah. uh, around the uh, little le- bit of the little bit of the league. So uh, we're from Milwaukee to Nashville. We'll see you guys on Saturday. Take it easy. Keep strong, Milwaukee.